All right. Well, there were some boys who were standing along the sidewalk and they're watching the town parade going by and they became intrigued by a fire truck that had a Dalmatian dog sitting in the front seat. And the boys started looking at that and thinking about that and they even started coming up with reasons why the dog was sitting there with the firemen. And uh, as they each had their shared their ideas, it kind of evolved into an argument over who was right. And Tommy said, well, they use them to bark at all the people and keep the crowds back during a fire. Billy said, no, that's not right. They're just there for good luck and keeping the firemen safe. But it was little Johnny who ended the argument. He brought it to a close when he announced to them, no, they used the dog to find the fire hydrants. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> oh. Well, um, we're going to continue in our, in our series now. As I said, the last week we talked about the day of pain. For the disciples in particular, Saturday was the day of confusion. I was thinking back to several years ago when I was doing youth ministry down in Southern California, and we were taking a team of, of youth and adults to Cincinnati for International Youth Convention. Grayson, did you go to that one in Cincinnati? No? Missed that one? Um, I forget exactly how many of us there were, uh, 10 or 12 of us, going over there. We, had to, we, flo we flew to Cincinnati, stayed in a hotel, there was a conference, we did some sightseeing and other activities. And for a group like that, we needed to raise thousands of dollars to get this trip together. The teens and adults were all doing some of the work and raising some of the money. We were working together to raise money. They were putting aside, making deposits and payments and things like that to raise the money. And we were down to probably less than a month to go. And we were still thousands of dollars away from making the goal to pay for everything. We had deposits in, we had hotel rooms saved, we had tickets bought, we had certain things were done. We were committed and ready to go, but we did not have all the money needed. And I was beginning to think, we've got to sell an awful lot of cookies to get these guys to Cincinnati. And we're deeply committed. I'll tell you, I was not sleeping at night. Um, I was sitting in my office most days looking at the wall going, what am I going to do? How are we going to get this done? How in the world are we going to take care of these responsibilities? And I was kind of breaking down over this thing. I just felt the, the, the weight was on me to, to figure out how to get the money and, and move, move ahead. I didn't want to disappoint the teenagers. Um, I had made commitments to parents. The church was heavily invested. A lot of money was spent. And, and yet, we were sitting there uh, wondering how it was going to all work out. And I was quickly approaching, and I even remember uh, what I'll call a day of pain, when uh, I was just heading headlong into this, and it just, there was a day, I remember it, uh, so clearly, when I, it was an afternoon, I was in the office, and I was just breaking apart. I didn't know what to do. I was lost. And I just began uh, praying and asking God, and, you know, give us a vision, uh, something. Let me climb up in the attic and find a forgotten box of money. Something, Lord. I, we, it, something needs to happen. And I was, uh, I'd hit a day of pain. I was, I'd been buried in, a day, in days of confusion. And we come to those moments. How are we going to handle those days? Now, the, the short story of that is, is we ended up raising the money and the church, um, uh, God even revealed a, a few things to me in some unusual ways. And we, we went to the church and some money was donated and, and it came in. And God just did some amazing things in the last minute. I don't know why he has to wait like that on us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But he, he came through like he does. And, and all was fine. But you know, how do we handle those 
kinds of days. How do I, what do I do in the day of pain? How do I get through the day of confusion? And how do I get to the days of joys? That's what we've been talking about. And today in this day of confusion, I know that you've been there too. Maybe you're even there now. We all experience those days of confusion. Um, we all know uh, what it's like. You may not always call it confusion. You might use a word like worry. Have you ever had worry in your life? Have you ever been there when you just weren't sure how it was going to work out and what to do? Have you ever had financial worry? <laughs> Have you ever had relationship worry? Have you ever had emotional worry or physical worry? I mean, we do, right? Sometimes um, those worries are momentary. They're rather mild. They come upon us and then they move along their way. And sometimes that day of confusion is just a dark time of darkness and fear. And maybe you've had those hard times where you just felt lonely. You felt like maybe there was no way out. You were moving towards despair. Sometimes that cloud of doubt and worry just becomes so heavy, we drop into a depression and it just seems like there is no, there's no door to go through. There's no pathway to walk. There's nowhere to go. I mean, have you ever felt like Jesus and cried out, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, even under the point of death? And we looked that's the verse that we looked at last week. What are you going to do when you go through those dark times, those dark days of your life, those way, days when you don't have the slightest idea of how you're going to move forward, how you're going to move on, how you're going to continue? Do you go left? Do you go right? You just seem like you're frozen and paralyzed in a point of time with, with no hope. And we can have those times. One author said, we become so confused that we either make destructive decisions or no decisions at all, and the circumstances that, res de that result destroy our spirit, and in some cases can even destroy our lives. You know, last week when we took a look at the story of Jesus and his death, resurrection, uh, we began to discover the day of pain and what we can do in that time. And there's a great uh, uh, answer for us in those days of confusion. There's a great way of escape that we want to discover this morning. For Jesus, it was Friday when he was arrested, beaten, and ultimately crucified on the cross. We saw how Jesus gave us an example to follow that uh, we would know what to do when we hit our day of pain. When we get that letter, we get that news, when we face that moment, we learned some things last week that we can do. Now next, after the day, after Friday, was Saturday. And in this particular story, we know that it was a day of confusion and doubt for the disciples. Just imagine for a moment what this day would have been like for them. You may not have to imagine it too hard because we've all been there at the, the death and the loss of somebody that we cared about. But imagine for them how much broader this was, how much deeper it was. The moment for them, this day for them, Saturday for them, they were all in shock. The Bible doesn't tell us a whole lot about this day. Uh, just a few insights. But we do know a couple things. We do know that after Jesus' body was buried, two of the ladies, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the Bible says, they went out there and they just sat there watching the tomb. Not for any reason other than the fact they didn't know what else to do. They were in total disbelief and they just sat there looking at it. Jesus was supposed to be the Messiah. Jesus was supposed to be the answer. Jesus was supposed to lead them towards victory over the trials of this world. They loved him. They would have followed him and served him anywhere. And they couldn't believe that he was gone. They didn't know what to do. In their minds, this was, not only the, this was not the way things were supposed to turn out. This is not the way it was supposed to go. This couldn't be the end. Now what do we do? I mean, a lot of the disciples, they'd given up their jobs. 
They'd left their families. They had given everything. They put all their eggs into the one basket that Jesus was the Messiah, the one, and they were to follow him and do what he told them to do. And now he was gone. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 31, Jesus prepared them for this. He says, he says to them, this very night, you will fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, that be Jesus, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. The Message Bible said it like this, before the night's over, you are going to fall to pieces because of what happens to me. And that's exactly what happened. They were coming apart at the seams. They didn't know what they were supposed to do. They didn't know where they were supposed to go. I mean, now, now what? I mean, maybe it, was, maybe it wasn't even what we thought it was. Their faith is crumbling. Their futures are crumbling. And they didn't know what to do, so they, they scattered. They were terrified. Some of them wondered, hey, maybe we're next. Well, they killed him. Maybe they're going to come get us now. And the disciples had chosen to take a stand, to, to stand with Jesus Christ. But now what? They killed him. Maybe we're the next one. And for them, this was their day of confusion. Have you ever been there? Not wondering what you're supposed to do? Or how it might turn out? So how do you face the day of confusion? Or how do you get through the day of confusion? Well, again, we see an answer in this story. It's actually quite exciting. Not when we go through the days of pain and confusion, but to know that there is an answer. Jesus knew the disciples we're going to fall apart, to go to pieces. He, he declared that to him. We just read that. So he began to prepare them ahead of time. Before that moment, before it's all started, before it occurred, he says, you're going to fall to pieces. So I want to tell you about this. I want to prepare you for what's going to happen so that you know how to get through the day of confusion. In John chapter 16, in verses 16 and then also in 20 to 22, he says this. Jesus went on uh, to say, in a little while you will see me no more. That's when he's crucified. And then after a little while, you'll see me again. So they knew he was going to go away and then come back. Now I tell you the solemn truth. You will weep and wail, but the, wor but the world will rejoice. You will be sad but your sadness will turn to joy. When a woman gives birth, she has distress because her time has come. But when her child is born, she no longer remembers the suffering because of her joy that a human being has been brought into the world. So also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy away from you. Isn't that a great picture of what's happening, what happens when we trust in the Lord through the time of suffering, through the time of discouragement, that after we get through it, no matter what we're facing, no matter what pain we have, no matter what difficult issue there is, when we get through it on the other side, the joy is so incredible, it makes all the suffering, all the trials, all the strife go away. And um, I can't speak on behalf of a woman who's given birth. Uh, although I was there for two births of our children. And when the baby emerges into the room, how it changes everything. Suddenly it goes from, I hate you, you did this to me, to I love you and thank you. <laughs> Jesus knew they would go through their day of confusion and he wanted to prepare them. He says, you know what, you're going to be sad. You're going to be in stress. You're even going to weep and hail, ha uh, wail. But if you just hang on a little while, I promise you that your sorrow will turn back to joy. That's the answer in making it through your day of confusion. Hang on to the promises of God. 
Whatever you're going through, whatever challenge you face, what, whatever you're dealing with, if you want to make it through your day of confusion, the way to do it is to hang on to the promises of God. Some have calculated there are over 3,000 promises in the Bible. Now, Pastor Rick Warren, in his message, the answer is Easter, he would more than double that number and says there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. Either way, it's a lot, and either way, it's enough to sustain you through no matter what you face. Have you ever um, recorded a football game or, or some event, and you, you, your plan is to maybe watch it later when you get home? And you've got it on the DVR, it's all ready, and you're just hoping to get from wherever you had to be that night, uh, get to home without somebody talking to you about the game or, or hearing some kind of piece of news on the radio that gives you the end score. You want to you keep the thrill in it by keeping it a mystery and keeping it a secret. And so you don't want to know how it turns out because when you know the answer, if you, know, if you hear ahead of time, if you, if you find out how it's going to, all the anxiety is gone. And, and, and that, that wondering, that, that following and trying to decide, you know, how, how it's going to happen, what's going to happen, it's, it's all kind of taken away. Now, that's kind of a good kind of anxiety. We kind of like that kind. It's kind of fun to watch your team battle it out for the victory. But still, it helps us to see clearly that when we know how it turns out, it takes the anxiety away. And that's what God wants for you when you're facing the days of confusion in your life. He wants you to know and to hold on to the promises that He has made for you so that you don't have to worry, you don't have to fear, because we know how it all turns out. We know where this is going. We know what the end result is. We know the final score. And so there's nothing to fear and there's nothing to worry about. In fact, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 20, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Jesus Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Every promise that God has given in his word is already a yes. And he wanted to prove that to us in Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus is God's assurance to us that all the promises of God are true. All the promises, everything he's ever said is true. It's on track. There's nothing that surprises him. There's nothing that he doesn't know about. And there's nothing that has happened, is happened, or is ever going to happen that he isn't already at work dealing with and doing something about. The promises of, that God has given to you will help you through any situation you ever face. You know, as we look to God's word, the source and the location of the promises that we want to find and hang on to, we can discover there are so many things for us to look to. God has promised to give you new life. God has promised to give you strength. God has promised to give you a hope. God has promised to never leave you or never give up on you. God has promised to provide a way for you. God has promised his love for you. God has promised to forgive you. God has promised to give you victory over death. God has promised that he works in all circumstances and brings them together for the good of the work that he's doing. There's nothing you'll ever face. There's nothing that's big, too big for God. But instead, he promises to be there, to help you, to lead you, to make a way for you, and that he is taking you to an ultimate glory in heaven. So what we do on those days of confusion is we hang on to those promises. My God is with me. My God loves me. My God leads me and provides for me. My God will help me no matter what I face. 
And we find such a powerful answer in knowing that it's the promises that help us through. So how do we learn those promises? I, I should have brought up a Bible because this may not mean a lot to you right now, but, but it's in here. <laughs> the promises are in here. This is my Bible. <laughs> it's where I keep my Bible. Where I read the scriptures and I look for God's leading and guidance and help in my life. And we've been talking about for some time now the challenge to spend 15 minutes a day in your chair with God. Find your, you know, get your favorite beverage, find your favorite spot, your chair, whether that's a recliner in the living room or a bench out on the back porch or a rock up on a hill. Find your chair and spend 15 minutes with God every day. Read deeply in His Word and let His promises fill you with truth that will guide you through the difficult days of life. Let His promises fill your mind and your thoughts so that when you're tempted to be afraid and you're tempted to doubt and you're tempted even to run from God, His promises can sustain you and keep you moving towards Him. Spend 15 minutes a day in your chair alone with Him and let Him firm you up and build you up and strengthen you for the day that you need to get through because it's filled with conf confusion and pain so that you can get to the day of joy. And we'll talk about that next week. Let's pray. Our Father, we give